everyone and welcome. It's Dave Bredhauer. I'm going to start today by showing you a couple of techniques that we'll use on cards later in the video. To begin this technique, we're going to fill a piece of cardstock with sponged color from a distressed ink pad. I'm beginning with Wilted Violet and I'm filling in different areas, sort of hopping from one section to another with leaving some open spaces in between. And then I'm going to start adding a different color, Evergreen Bow, and I want to make sure that areas of color are overlapping. You don't need to build up the color too much. You can make some areas darker and some areas lighter, but the idea here is just to fill it in so you can see what the effect is once we do the technique. I'll finish it off with a color called Peeled Paint, and then I'm going to spritz it with a solution of two cups of water and one teaspoon of bleach to make some nice bright white spots on the background. Now I'm going to apply this easy technique, but take it a step further. Again, I'm going to use a light colored piece of cardstock for my sponged background. I'll begin with a light yellow color called Squeeze Lemonade, then add some tumbled glass, and I'm just adding it randomly around the different areas of the cardstock, trying to fill up the panel. Once you've filled up your background, you're going to spritz it with water and bleach again, but you're immediately going to start sponging again before those droplets completely dry. The ink is going to react with the water and bleach solution. It's going to change the color of the ink, making it darker, or in some cases, changing the shade altogether. This is really noticeable when I use a darker color like this evergreen bow. You can see that the wet areas really pull that ink in and give it a deeper shade right where those water droplets are. I'm going to skip around a little bit, leaving some of the water droplets untouched so that certain areas are brighter than others. Once I allow the panel to dry completely, I'll go on to the next step. Starting with peeled paint again, I'll apply sponged ink around the edge of the card. For the most part, the panel is completely dry, so there won't be any reaction going on with the water droplets, so the ink is going to just lay down normally on the cardstock like it, it usually does. I'm going to fill up the edges, just continuing with the peeled paint, and I want to vary the intensity of the color so that there's some areas lighter than others. Now I'm going to take that bleach and water solution again and spritz it. I'm just going to kind of squeeze the trigger lightly so that there's big spots and little spots that show up on my panel. And then immediately again afterwards, while the drops are still wet, I'm going to start by applying some more color. That wet area is going to catch that color and darken some of the spots. I'm going to switch from evergreen bow over to a nice brown distressing color called ground espresso. We'll follow this up with one final spritz of bleach and water solution, but you can see that you can do this as many times as you want, slowly building all the color into different levels and different shades until you're really happy with the result. Okay, now that we've mastered that first technique, I'm going to show you another one that creates some amazing watercolor backgrounds. Creating these backgrounds is effortless, and you'll love the results. We're going to use Peerless Watercolor. It comes in a sheet form. It's concentrated color on these little paint chips, 
And what I'd like to do is make a little chart that I can pull the color from. I've labeled it and then I dab a little of my wet brush onto it, pull the color, and then I start applying it to a wet piece of watercolor paper that I've taped down to my work surface. I'm going to apply daffodil yellow first. I'm just going to put some in the corner, put some in the middle. I'm not paying too much attention to how I'm applying it here. And I'm going to switch to my blue color. This is cobalt blue. I'm going to put a little bit in the areas that I haven't added any yellow to. I'll put some in the areas that have some yellow and you'll see it starting to blend together. Next, the cling wrap. You'll take some cling wrap, you'll put a sheet of it onto the wet watercolor, and then you'll use your fingers to start drawing that cling wrap up into the paint. You want lots of little wrinkles. The wrinkles are what's going to give you the effect here. You want to make sure this is happening while the paint is still wet, and just continue messing around with it until you have all of the areas wrinkled and you're happy with, with what it looks like. We're going to let that set for a little bit. The drying time is going to depend on how warm your craft room is. For me it took about two hours for this to get good and dry, but once it's ready it's really easy to remove the plastic wrap. It comes right up, doesn't stick to the paint at all. And what you're left with is this beautiful watercolor pattern that almost looks like light reflected in a pool. You can see the spots where we had the yellow and you can see the spots where we had the blue, and then the plastic wrap has sort of mushed all that color together and created new colors. I'm going to remove the tape so you can see the difference. The color's so intense with these Peerless watercolors. I just love using them. to go through this process one more time, again wetting a 140 pound cold press piece of watercolor paper that I've attached to my work surface. And I'm going to start with a light color, again another yellow using the Peerless watercolors. I'm going to put it on uh, fairly lightly. I want you to try varying the intensity of the color. That'll make a difference in the final result. And this time I'm going to use a red. This is poinsettia red. I'm going to dab it here and there just with my brush adding a little bit more towards the edge and maybe a little bit in the center and just basically sort of blobbing it on. And I'll finish it up with a bright pink color off to the side. Make sure you're rinsing your brush in between so you don't mix colors because all the mixing is going to happen with the plastic. And again I'll apply the plastic wrap on there. I've just turned this piece of plastic wrap over. You can see the blue spots from the paint before. As long as it's on the, the right side you won't have any trouble. Remove the plastic once it's dry and you'll see the three different colors on there. You can tell that you could put on three colors, five colors, seven colors, as many as you want. Now that you know how to do the techniques, let's get started on some of the projects. I'm going to use the Dancing Fairy and the Posing Fairy, both dies from poppy stamps, and I'll need to get those cut out of black cardstock. You'll notice that the wings are separate from the fairies. I did this so that you could position the wings in different ways. Maybe they could be a little bit up or a little bit down, or you could cut out two wings so that there'd be multiple layers on the back of the fairy. Let's make it a little bit more versatile. I'm going to take some crafter's glue and I'm going to just add a little dab of it to the wing and glue it onto the back of the fairy. I'll set these aside to dry and then we'll get started on the next die that we need for this project. We're going to use the dandelion stem, one of my favorites from this new collection. I think that the intricate details on it really stand out on a project and I've got this proportion so that it works really nicely with the fairies. I did have this in mind when I designed it. I think it can work well on its own, but you'll see that it just it's just the right size for the fairies to be holding this in place. 
Now I've taken a piece of that fairy watercolor background that we did earlier and I've cut the dandelion stem into it. I'm marking the corners of the rectangle so that I'll know where to position it back in place afterwards and also where to position the adhesive. We'll be doing some simple paper piecing here and you'll see that this is an easy way to get all those pieces back in place. Beginning at one of the corners that I've marked out, I'm going to start laying down lines of adhesive from the top to the bottom of that rectangular area. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because you're going to be putting that panel over the top of it. But before you do, you're going to use a piercing tool to get some of those little pieces out of that die cut. And we want to save those because we're going to be putting them back into the die cut once we have it mounted on the card. I'm just carefully pushing through those little pieces. I think there's about five or six of them there. And then I'm going to use my fingers to just carefully wiggle that out of that watercolor panel. Now make sure you save that stem because I'm going to show you a bonus card later where we're going to use that. You'll get two cards for the price of one. So we're going to take that negative area, all the leftover panel there, and I'm going to put it onto the adhesive. And I'm going to carefully press that down so it's nice and flat. You can see in between that open area that there's still some adhesive showing and that's going to help us adhere things down. I've cut the dandelion stem out again out of some glitter cardstock and I'm just going to push it into place. I'm going to start at one side and I'm going to carefully move to the other side just pushing it down until the glitter cardstock lays at the same level of the watercolor paper. I've left a couple of pieces of the glitter cardstock stuck in the die so that you can see if this happens to you. It's pretty easy to dig those out. I'm just using a needle tool to pull them out of the way. And I'll finish the process by using that needle tool to put all those little areas of paper back into place. This tool is good at getting all the little detailed areas filled in. There's no way that I could use my fingers to stick all these things back in place. And that adhesive that's on the card is holding them right where they need to be. I don't have to add any glue. It's nice and simple. So now it's just a matter of filling in the puzzle. You're going to have all your pieces. You need to make sure that they're going in the right spots. Fortunately, there's not too many, so it goes pretty quickly. And it's so satisfying once you get that final piece in. Your fairies should be dry now, so it's time to complete the card. We're going to use just a little bit of crafter's glue. I'm just going to dab a little bit every half inch or so onto the fairy. Don't need to put too much on, just need to kind of hold it in place. And the composition is such that I want that fairy on the right side to be holding the stem. So the only thing that you really need to line up are her hands. You're going to put it so that it overlaps the stem and gives the idea that she's holding it up in the air as she's flying. Now the other side, we're going to take that fairy and add a little bit of glue, just like we did to the first one, and we'll put her a little bit higher on the card. I want her to maybe be touching one of the seeds at the top of the stem so it looks like they're interacting together to hold this dandelion stem up. I erased my pencil marks on the edges of the rectangle and all that's left to do is to put a sentiment on the inside of the card and send it to a friend. Now there's a leftover piece of glitter cardstock that we're going to use for this extra card here. I'm going to start by sponging some fossilized amber onto a light colored piece of cardstock and follow that up with a little bit of ground espresso. We're going to use these pieces to cut out fairies, again the exact same shapes, but this time since the sponging is on there it'll give them a little bit of color. I'll position the dies so that the legs are darker than their tops and kind of the same with the wings. Then I'll assemble them and I'll do the exact same composition, but see that leftover piece of glitter cardstock? Now it becomes the focal point for an all new card. Now we still have that leftover dandelion stem from our first card, so I'm going to use that to create our bonus third card. 
The Circle Basic set and the Square Basic set are two craft die collections from the Open Studio line. They each have 16 different size shapes in there. They're a good value and excellent for modern, sort of contemporary looking cards. My idea here is to create different nesting frames using different colors of cardstock. So I'm going to pick several sizes of squares. It doesn't matter too much what size you choose. I suppose the first size should be big enough to accommodate the seed head of the dandelion stem. But then when you choose larger squares, I would just recommend skipping a size or skipping two sizes, just so you can vary the scale of each of the frames. Now when you choose your cardstock colors, I want you to think a little bit about what color the dandelion stem is. There's a bunch of different shades of green and aqua on the dandelion stem, so that's what I've chosen for my cardstock layers. I think that that combination will coordinate well. I'm going to flip all the layers over, and I'm going to line them up so that they're nice and positioned perfectly inside of each other. And then I'll use my tape gun to create an adhesive strip across each of them. This is going to connect all the layers together and at the same time put adhesive backing on the back of the frames. Now some of this frame is going to get cut off, so just put adhesive across the areas that need to be connected together and then put a little bit towards the edge and you can position it on the card so that it works out best with the adhesive. I've decided to put it at an angle on my card. I'll put it on, press it down. I want to leave a little space at the bottom for stamping and then I'm going to go ahead and trim it down so that the area is nice and clean at the edge. A couple dots of glue will hold the dandelion stem in place, and then I'm going to use one of the clear stamp sets from Poppy Stamps. It's called Hope and Thanks to put a sentiment on the lower right corner of the card. You saw that I practiced there first. I think it's important to practice your stamping before you stamp your actual project. And then you're finished. While I was making this, I couldn't help but wonder what it would look like with some circle frames as well. So I decided to do circle frames and I even tried it in a different color. Again, you'll pick and choose the sizes of the circle dies so that you have successively larger circle frames to work with. Apply adhesive to the back, put it on your card, and trim off the edges. And I've matched the circle frames to the colors that I've used for my watercolor background dandelions. For our next project, we're going to switch back to the original technique I showed you, the fairy drops, to create a background for the Poppy Stamps Birch Collage die. I'll unfold a plain white A2 sized note card and position it on one side of the card, running it through my die cut machine so it creates a panel on the right edge. I'll carefully separate the card from the die, and do you see all those little white pieces inside of the die that are still remaining? Save those for another project. I'll use my tape gun to apply adhesive to the back of the die cut. Just take your time, run it along the tree trunk, run it along the edges. We're going to be putting a panel of cardstock behind this open area so that when we start doing our paper piecing, we'll have a platform to put our pieces onto. Once you have all of your adhesive in place, you're going to cut a panel that's about four by five and a quarter, and you're going to adhere that to the back. The adhesive will hold it in just the right spot, and it'll fill in that open area that you made with the die cut. I used a piece of off-white cardstock just so you could see it in the video, but you'd probably want to match it with the white note card that you're using for the front. And now, the fun part! I'm going to start with Distress Ink in a color called Squeezed Lemonade, and I'm filling in a few areas here and there on some light colored cardstock. I followed up with Distress Ink in Tumbled Glass. I'm slowly building the color onto the cardstock, making sure that I overlap the blue onto the yellow, and I'll finish with Distress Ink in Evergreen Bow. I'm going to add a little bit more pressure with the Evergreen Bow just so I can make the color a little bit more intense. Now I'm going to take my bleach and water solution and squeeze a few droplets over the cardstock and immediately start sponging again. I don't want to give the wet area any time to dry out because I want the ink to start reacting with the droplets moisture. I'm applying peeled paint around the edge and I'm going sort of into the center here and there. I want to leave some of the spaces untouched and then I want to overlap 
plenty of that color that I put on in the beginning. It's really fun to see how this develops as you start smoothing the ink around the edges. The background, where it's dry, stays fairly light. It picks up a little bit of color, but then the wet areas really darken and adds just another layer and dimension as you're putting this technique together. I'll switch back to Evergreen Bow and intensify some of the color. Some of this will make those white spots go away, and some of those white spots will pull on a little bit of color because it's dried a little bit at this point. Now we're going to switch back to the bleach and water solution and add a few more drops speckled around the edges and maybe a little bit more in the center this time. I decided to stop here because I like where the speckled area sort of coincided with that bright yellow area, give it a nice glow, and it's going to work great with my design. I'm going to position my birch collage die in just the right spot and run it through the die cut machine. The birch collage die is not too intricate, so it's really easy to pop those pieces out. Save that panel, you can use it on another card, but all these little pieces that come out, you're gonna glue in place. Now you can use your favorite adhesive here. I've decided to use some wet crafter's glue to put a few dots of adhesive here and there. Doesn't take too much. And I'm gonna start just putting all those little areas together. It's just like a puzzle. We're going to put one at a time, just use my finger to smooth out and ensure that each piece is flattened to the level of the cardstock of the card. You'll notice as you're doing this project that one characteristic of this particular die is it has all those little notches in the trunk, which helps guide you in putting these pieces right into place. You'll finish this process up simply by repeating the procedure again and again. Add some glue to the open areas and then take your time putting each of the pieces into the appropriate spot. Once you've finished gluing in the last section, it's time to choose a sentiment. Again, I'm going to use that Poppy Stamps Hope and Think set. It has a ton of different sayings on it, and you can mix and match to create a variety of different cards. I've chosen Hoping, and then I've put To See You Soon down below. And I've practiced here, stamping it on a piece of scratch paper before I do my actual project. And I wanted you to see what the fairies looked like in a lighter color, in this case teal, that matches with the background that we created for the cart. Okay, now remember that background layer that I told you to save. We're going to use that to create yet another card. We just don't want to waste anything while we're doing our crafting. So I'm adding some glue to the edges. It was a little bit too narrow for my tape gun to put adhesive on that edge. And I'm going to glue it to the front of a white note card. It'll let some of that white show through and I can leave it. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the card, just by an eighth inch or so. So I'll trim that down and add my fairies for a quick bonus card. Now this project might be my favorite. When I started planning this video, I made a couple of cards, but soon I got carried away because I was having so much fun with the backgrounds, and this one just turned out so neat. I'm starting with the Hampstead Butterfly Stem from Poppy Stamps, and I'm pairing it with the Dancing Fairy. You're going to use a lot of color on this card, so the trick here is to slowly build it up. You don't necessarily want to mush it on all at once, you want to slowly build layer after layer. I'm beginning with squeezed lemonade and then following up with fossilized amber. I've glued the Hampstead butterfly stem down to the card using some craft glue and I've let it dry. And when I rub over that, I have to be a little bit careful that I don't pull it up. So I'm being really gentle as I'm going over the leaves and the butterfly and the stem, slowly adding that color but making it as intense as I possibly can. I've switched to evergreen bow and I'm making sure that every little area is getting filled in on that card. I'm sort of skipping around, putting the ink here and there, and I'm leaving an open spot in the middle. I wanna keep sort of a glow towards the center, so I'm putting hardly any ink there. 
I've spritzed it with the bleach and water solution and I've let it dry completely. I want to make sure that those white dots stay white and as I add this wilted violet color, I'm not going to get any dark spots because everything's dry. I'm adding the purple here and there, just along the edge. I'm spacing it out so that it's not concentrated too much in one spot. And then I'm switching to ground espresso and doing all of the edge of the card. That gives it sort of a nice perimeter. The border gets nice and dark and sort of focuses the color and makes it look a little bit more intense. I want to add a little bit of color to the leaves and the butterflies on the Hampstead stem. This will make them stand out a little bit against the background and I've sped up the video a little bit here just to save some time. I'm using Copic markers in Aqua Mint and Green Bice. The Green Bice makes the leaves look a little bit lemony yellow and then I'm going to use the Aqua Mint, just a touch of it, and blend it out with the Green Bice to add some dimension to each of the leaves. After you've finished coloring in the leaves, then add some canary yellow Copic marker to the butterflies. Just a little bit of color here and there. And the Copic marker will layer a little bit with the color that you sponged on previously, creating new shades and making it really pop. I got some of the dancing fairies ready by sponging them with the fossilized amber and the ground espresso ink, making sure that there's a little bit of blending going on from top to bottom. And then I'm just going to glue those wings on just like I did previously. I wanted you to see a different color scheme for the fairies. Sometimes they can be light, sometimes they can be dark. This one I wanted a little bit neutral in the middle because I knew that there was going to be a glow around the fairy. I wanted her to stand out a little bit, but I wanted the background to really be the highlight of the card. I've cut a tiny little bit of foam mounting tape, narrow enough that it fits on the back of the fairy's body without showing. I'm using that to make her float a little bit above the stem. I will use that same clear stamp set again, hope and thanks, and this time just the thank you image. I love this font. I use this a lot and it's just a good basic to have. I'm going to practice first and I'm going to stamp my project and all that's left to do is add a little bit of embellishment. I've chosen some diamond glitter glue and I'm applying it gently to each of the butterflies to add a little bit of sparkle. I'm so excited to share this next one with you. This combines some of my favorite elements of craft dies. I love creating designs that work together and I've created four different forest scenes that can be layered together to create sort of a tunnel effect on your card or paper craft project. Now beginning with the largest size, the first die is the Timberland Collage, the next size is the Grove, the next size is the Thicket, and the smallest is the Wildwood Collage. And when you layer these all together, you can see that you can see right through the middle and you could put little things in between each little hill and branch, but it's just this really cool effect. There are so many creative opportunities with an idea like this. You can use all four together or just use a couple, but I decided to really go for it and use all four layers. So on the first layer, we don't want a lot of color. I'm softly sponging on some squeezed lemonade ink and I'll follow that up with just a little touch of the fossilized amber. You'll find some of these colors go on a little bit darker than others, so you have to be a little bit careful as you're adding the sponged technique. And I don't want you to worry if it doesn't look too softly blended out. Remember that these inks settle down after a while and blend into the paper. Plus, we're going to be squirting it with a little bit of that water and bleach solution for those fairy drops, and so everything will look fine in the end. I'll finish off with a little bit of peeled paint and I'll double check that the Timberland collage is going to fit nicely on there. I'm going to put the second layer together now, keeping in mind that you only need to sponge just right around where it's going to cut. Once you start layering these all together, the edges of this paper aren't even going to show, so you're sponging mainly in the center. I started with peeled paint. 
I'm putting some of that fossilized amber on, and I'm going a little bit darker this time. Remember to add layers. Even this tumbled glass, which doesn't look like it's really doing much, is kind of blending those colors together and adding a little bit more visual interest. I'll finish with evergreen bow. You can see that this layer is a little bit darker than the first. Now for the third layer, you're going to be making a layer for the thicket collage. I want you to press pretty hard now. I'll start with fossilized amber and really lay it on pretty thick. And then evergreen bow, I'm going to fill in some of those untouched areas. And I'll finish it off with some of the ground espresso. I want to darken things a little bit more. I want a lot of intense color here because that third layer needs to be a little bit deeper. Finally, the fourth layer, the wildwood collage, needs to be the darkest out of all of them. I'll begin with fossilized amber, pressing pretty hard, getting lots of color on there, a little peeled paint, some ground espresso, but the idea is this is going to be your most intense layer. It'll need the most color out of all of them. So I've lined them all up so you can see the different intensities for each layer. Going from left to right, it gets darker and darker and darker. And I'll take each of those dies and run them through my die cut machine. And then I'll assess if it needs a little bit more ink. It looks like that first layer, I think I want to outline it with a little bit of that ground espresso. I think adding a perimeter around the edge of your card tends to make everything look a little bit more complete. So I'm just going around a very light layer around the edge and keeping the main portion of the panel nice and light. Now I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to move on to the next layer. It's a little bit smaller and I've decided I want a little bit of dark green at the bottom and maybe some up among the branches. The third layer doesn't need too much. Maybe I'm going to put a little bit more yellow on the trunk. You'll see how careful I'm being when I'm applying the color. I don't want to bend things too much. And finally, I'll end up with a little bit of touch up on the smallest layer. I think it needed to be a little bit darker towards the bottom. Apply a few quick spritzes of your solution to the top panel and set it aside. Now we're going to begin to assemble the tunnel. I'm using some thin strips of foam mounting tape on the back of each of the panels, and this is going to add a little bit of spacing in between each layer to really accentuate the dimension that you can create with these dies. I'm doing the bottom three layers, I'm just stacking them one by one, and I want to pay attention to what the hill looks like in the center of each of these dies. You don't have to worry too much about the edges of the lower layers because that top panel hides everything, so just make sure that your tree trunks are straight and the hills show up well in the background. Now before we put the top layer on top of these bottom layers, I want to take a look at the next die. We're going to use the Poppy Stamps Thoughtful Fairy and we're going to position her so that she's sort of sitting in the tunnel. I want to use her on a piece of black cardstock, so I've gone ahead and run her through the die cut machine, cut it out, and glued the wing on just with a little bit of crafter's glue. I'll set the Thoughtful Fairy aside to dry. You want to give her enough time, say 20 minutes or so, so that the wing is nice and secure. And in the meantime, I'm going to put some foam mounting tape on the back side of the very top layer. And you can see that when we put that top layer on, it doesn't matter what the edges look like of the bottom layers because they all get hidden. And that nice fairy drop pattern is shown up on that top layer, adding a little bit of interest right around the edges of the forest. Now remember that watercolor technique I showed you at the beginning of the video? I've used a piece of that here. I want to create sort of a sunrise effect in the background, and I'm going to position it such that there's a little bit of light at the horizon, and then it deepens into a teal at the top. So I'm going to prepare the back side of the panels. I'm going to put some glue on there, and I'm going to cut my watercolor piece down so that it fits just in the opening. And I'll put it just so that yellow shows up above the horizon and set that aside to dry. I love making scenes, so I decided to use the tiny frogs and the mushrooms and toadstools die from Poppy Stamps to create sort of a scene in front of the fairy. I'm going to take those out and I'm going to cut them out of a light colored cardstock and then I'm going to use some Copic markers to color them in. They're kind of small, so you have to hold them in place. Just get them saturated with color, and you know that alcohol ink from Copic Markers blends out, so it'll be nice and smooth once you're done. 
I'm going to color the frog first with that green bice color and then switch to strong red for the mushroom cap. Just color it in, switch things around, and finish coloring the other side of the mushroom cap. You're going to repeat this process for the different portions of the mushrooms. The other cap is going to be strong red as well, and it'll color quickly. It's a very tiny piece. And then I'm going to switch to an orange Copic color called pumpkin yellow for the next cap. And the final cap, I'm going to go back to green bice. You want to color these all in. Don't worry too much about getting the edges completely colored in because we're going to rub the edges with some of that sponge distress ink just to give a little finished effect on each of these pieces. Now I'm going to use this uniball white pin to add some white dots to the mushroom caps. I think this will make it look a little bit more fun and realistic. Just put the ink on there, make a little squiggle, build up the white. This is going to dry a little bit transparent so we're going to go back later and add another layer of white just to keep those nice and bright. But this will be the first layer. We'll set those aside to dry. And while those are drying, we're going to work on the stems. I'm going to use a little bit of that fossilized amber color just on the edge of all these little mushroom stems to add some dimension. It doesn't take much. Just use your sponge, rub a little bit around the edge, it's okay if you don't get completely all over the stem because you want highlights here and there. And to finish off, we're going to use some of that ground espresso over that fossilized amber color. Again, be very delicate, just a little bit, just a little bit on the edge. You don't want completely dark stems. And we're going to finish off the edges of the mushroom caps as well. Now, your mushroom caps should be completely dry before you do this. I want you to go back in and add a little bit more of that white ink just to make it pop a little bit more against those colored backgrounds. And you can add a few more dots if it seems like it needs a little bit more color in there. Go ahead and glue the mushroom caps onto the stems and put some foam mounting tape on the back of each of the pieces so that you have them ready to mount on the card. I'm gonna start composing in the lower left corner I'll begin with the red mushroom cap and I'll follow it up with another mushroom and then I'll just keep building the scene. Your project will probably turn out a little bit different than mine, but it's okay. You're just going to assess it based on where the color and the spots and the background is just to make a really interesting composition. Leave a little bit of room because we still have to put that fairy in there and we're going to try to tuck her somewhere behind the very first layer between the first layer and the second layer. I've added a little bit of foam mounting tape so she pops up just a little bit. I'm just going to slip her down underneath that top panel and push her into place. This last project was so much fun to put together. It combines a fairy drop technique and a shaker card and alcohol inks to create a really stunning card. We're going to start with the background. We'll add lots of different layers of distress ink on there. We're filling the whole panel with lots of intense color. I want you to really build up the color on this one. I'm using peeled paint, I'm using fossilized amber, evergreen bow, and some ground espresso. I'm not worrying too much about the middle. We're going to be cutting the middle out. So I'm focusing mainly around the edges, making sure that the edges are nice and dark. And the perimeter is filled in with lots of different shades of that ink. Go ahead and squirt that panel with some of the bleach and water solution and set that aside to dry before you do the next step. The Poppy Stamps Garden Lantern was actually something that I wanted to use just for a project like this. I had made a note to myself that I wanted to do a shaker card so I designed a die that would accommodate one of the fairies. I could put the fairy inside it with some glitter and some sequins and make a shaker card out of it. So I've cut the lantern out of some metallic cardstock. Here you'll see it's pink, but it doesn't matter what color you use. We're going to be dabbing it with some alcohol inks, and the alcohol inks are going to change the color of whatever cardstock we use. That's not important. What is important is that you use a cardstock that has a finish to it so it stands up to this alcohol ink. As we're putting drops of the alcohol ink on there, 
the color is going to keep building and mixing and blending and it gets a little crusty looking and it ends up looking quite a bit like a garden lantern that's been weathered and sat out in the garden for a few years and that's the effect that we're going for. I'm using different shades of Copic refill but any alcohol reinker will work. You're just putting the tiniest little drops on here and they're going to blend out. I think that the fun part of this is just putting it on, watching how they blend together, and coming back a few minutes later and realizing, oh, I might need a little bit more of this color here, or a little bit more brown, or a little bit lighter color. You let it dry for about five, 10 minutes in between each time, and when you come back, you're gonna add to it, and eventually you'll get to a spot where you'll just love the texture that it's ending up with. I'm finishing up with a dark brown color. This is my walnut color. I use it a lot. You can see how many times I've used this. You can see when I turned the cap that all those little dried bits fell onto the paper, and I did that on purpose. All those little dried bits will actually dissolve out onto the any ink that's still wet on that lantern and just adds a little bit more interest. It's just kind of a cool effect. I've taken a look and decided, oh, I probably need a little bit more green here and there. So I'm gonna build that up just a little bit more and finish off with just a little bit more of that brown color. I want it to look sort of bronzed, something that's sort of aged and something that's really been affected by the elements. And I'm gonna set that aside, let it dry. We'll come back to that in a little bit later and you'll see how it's dried and, and how it ends up. While we're waiting, we can prepare the next die. It'll be the Dainty Fairy from Poppy Stamps. It has a set of wings in there along with the fairy body, and we're gonna cut those out of two different kinds of cardstock. Just a light colored cardstock for the body, and I'm using a glittery cardstock for the wings. I'm going to change the color of the glitter cardstock just using a Copic marker. This color is Aqua Mint. You can use your Copic markers to change glitter cardstock to any color you want which makes that pretty versatile. And I thought that if I made it an aqua color, it would stand out a little bit more against the background, which is gonna be sort of a light yellowy color. And then I'm gonna use my sponge technique just to highlight the fairy a little bit. The idea here is that the fairy is providing the glow in the lantern. So the middle of her needs to be white and the exterior of her right around the perimeter can be a little bit yellowy, a little bit of that fossilized amber color. We'll set that aside to dry and we're gonna go ahead and cut out the middle of our panel. You can go ahead and save the extra piece in the middle for another project and then grab that alcohol ink lantern and set it in the middle, make sure everything lines up nicely. It should be good and dry now. Flip your project over. We're gonna use some tape gun adhesive to hold everything in place. So once you've got that wedged in there so it's nested nicely, you can use the tape gun to run some strips of tape across and that'll hold everything in place. You don't have to go everywhere. You just need to have enough adhesive on there to make sure things don't flop around. I'm gonna put some at the top. I'll turn things around and I'll put some at the bottom. Right after this, you are gonna be putting a piece of plastic transparency in place, and that'll be the window of your shaker card. So you wanna make sure that there's some adhesive on each edge of the lantern. Go ahead and place the transparency down. Make sure all those edges adhere to the transparency. Run your finger along all of them so that nothing slips, and then follow it up with a layer of foam mounting tape. You wanna make sure that there aren't any gaps. Go ahead and get things cut in nice and close along the edges. I've created a background for the fairy, just a soft little background on some cardstock, and I want to add some embellishments in the window. I've chosen some small clear sequins. I'm gonna pour in just a few. You can always take a few out, so just throw some in there and see what it looks like. I don't wanna completely cover the fairy. I wanna make sure that there's plenty of movement in there. You can put whatever you want in there. You can put something clear, or you can put something that's more colored, glitter, but I've chosen something a little simple for my project. The next step is to position the fairy so that she shows up inside the lantern. You're gonna to have to look a little bit from the side to make sure that things line up, and then flip your project over and make sure that she's more or less centered in the lantern. Once you're happy with the positioning, you can finish the card by removing the strips off the back of the panel, and you're gonna adhere that to a regular note card. We're going to finish off this card using a memory box die called Little Dragonflies. It cuts out three dragonflies at a time. I'm running it through my machine with a piece of glitter cardstock. 
I'm going to keep this the same color. It's a nice bright white glittery cardstock and I think it'll give the effect that these little dragonflies are buzzing around the light of the lantern. Three is a good number. I think that if you space them out, put one in a corner, one off to the side, and one in another corner, then that will be a good composition for the front of the card. Of course, you're going to have to adjust this based on the colors and the spray pattern and the composition that you use, but the three usually seems to work. After I was done putting all the dragonflies onto the card, I decided it needed a little something more. So I couldn't resist adding some more glitter using my Wink of Stella brush pen. I decided to put it on all the splattered areas, the parts where the solution had kind of cleared out some of the ink and made nice bright white spots. Thanks for watching. I hope you were as excited about these fairy cards and techniques as I was. Until next time. <laughs>